Sourcing the right talent for your company is important. You could post ads or list your jobs on job listing sites, hire a headhunter to do the job, but what if you could expand your reach to attract top-tier talent directly from your site? We are talking about having your job page on your site listed on Google whenever somebody types in job-related search queries such as remote jobs for accountants, you may see your job position listed on the feature snippet. The same goes for keywords like work from home jobs for data engineers or jobs for software engineers. If the job seeker clicks to find more jobs, they'll be led to a job search portal where your job post will get more attention. So in this video, if you're running a website and you are hiring, we're gonna show you how to add a job posting schema on your page to get featured on a jobs portal from Google. Let's go. Hey, it's Jack from RankMath, the one WordPress SEO plugin that constantly strives to provide you with the fastest and the most cutting-edge SEO tools. And on this channel, we provide you with the most up-to-date SEO knowledge to help you grow your search traffic. So if you're new to our channel, consider subscribing. Anyway, before we implement the job posting schema, we've got to learn about its do's and don'ts. This is Google's job posting schema guidelines. We have left a link to this page in the description if you want to check it out. As you can see, there are many items mentioned in this document, but I'll just pinpoint the important ones. If there are several copies of the same job posting, meaning for some reason there are duplicated job pages with different URLs on your site, you need to use canonical URLs to point those duplicated job pages to the main job post page. If you use RankMath on a duplicated job post page, you can visit RankMath's tab under the Advanced tab, scroll down, and here's where you can add the canonical URL. But in case you are creating duplicated job pages because maybe different branches are hiring the same job position, you don't need multiple pages, just one will do. You just gotta add different locations to the schema, which we'll share with you in a while, so stay tuned. Back to Google's guidelines, since job posting may be time sensitive, Google recommends having both your job posting URL on an XML sitemap as well as submitted through the Instant Indexing API. If you are a Rank Map user, you shouldn't have problems with the XML sitemap. You just have to make sure that on your Rank Maps dashboard, the sitemap module is toggled on. Under its settings, you will find a sitemap URL here. If you have connected your site to Google Search Console, which we do that automatically for you if you have gone through the setup wizard, then the sitemap would have already been submitted to Google Search Console. So there's nothing more you need to do. As for instant indexing, you will need to install a separate plugin developed by us called the Instant Indexing for Google. You can set it up through this guide we have. The link to this page is in the description and you will be able to submit your job posting page URL through instant indexing. And then back to Google's guidelines, in terms of technical issues, do not apply the job posting schema to a page that lists jobs. For example, a search results page. Apply the schema to a page that describes a single job. Then the most important of all is the job posting content policies. Because as you know, there are a lot of job scams going on nowadays and Google wants to mitigate that. You need to make sure that a job posting schema is added to a job post page that describes the job. Meaning the content of the page needs to be relevant. The description of the job needs to be complete and make sure that the job is genuine and truthful. Pause this video if you wanna read through this list of misrepresentations. Then, do not use profanity and vulgar language. Your job post must not be an advertisement. For example, leading people to a page that entice people to buy a product or attempt to recruit people to an MLM program. Then, expired job posts should be removed, meaning you should delete the job post page. But if you don't want to delete it, then you have to use a schema property called valid through, which we'll be talking about later. And there must be a way for applicants to apply for the job. Do not use the job posting schema to advertise events such as career fair invitations or needing applicants to register and log in to view the job posting details. Everything has to be transparent. Again, the job has to be genuine. And obviously, you shouldn't be collecting payments for the job. That's basically all the important points to note. As we go through the schema fields on our predefined job posting schema, you will understand more about the requirements. Now, our predefined job posting schema is available for both the free and the pro version of RankMath, just as some of the schema fields are not available in the free version. So now, let's check out what the differences are. 
Let's put a free and a pro version of the job posting schema mockup side by side so we can easily identify the differences. On the left is the free version and on the right is the pro version. Now whatever there is in the free version will be in the pro version but the pro version comes with additional schema fields such as the is telecommute job which is meant for 100% remote jobs when you toggle this on these fields will apply the right schema to let search engines know that your job post is for remote work or a work from home job in the free version you don't have that option if your job post requires your employee to report to a physical location the free version of rank math should be enough also with the pro version you have additional fields for the job requirement schema you can include the education level required and the experience required for the job. We'll talk more about these schema fields. So without further ado, let's dive right into how to add the job posting schema to your WordPress page. Now to have a job post on your site, it is as simple as creating a page on your site. On your WordPress dashboard, let's hover to pages and add new. Let's say that our BBQ store needs to hire an account executive who can work remotely so we don't need to prepare a desk or space. I'll add a page title, say account executive, and then I will add all the information about the job post. And finally, go to Rank Maths tab on the schema option, hit the schema generator, and select the job posting schema. Simple as that. Now let's talk about the required schema fields for the job posting schema type. Now, according to Google's job posting guidelines, the headline, description, then date posted, hiring organization are required schema fields, which means if there is no information added to these fields, you will not pass the reach results testing tool, which we'll be doing so in a while. And the address fields are required if the employee needs to report to a location for work. If it is 100% remote work, these fields become optional but the location type becomes a required field instead. All right, now that you know what are the required fields, let's go through each and every field so you know what to add to them to make your schema markup complete. Let's start with the very first field, which is the headline field. This field is meant for your job posting title. For example, accounts executive. This is a required field, but how we make sure that you pass the reach results test or basically the schema test is we take information from this SEO title variable if left empty. Now this SEO title variable takes information from, let's say for this post, over at the general tab of Rank Math on edit snippet, the variable will take information from whatever that is added to this title field. This is a preview of the combination of these variables. If you look at Google's guidelines, it says the headline field should not include the company name. So we've got to remove the separator and the site name variable. This title variable will take information from your page title. And if your page title is optimized for the job title, and this is exactly what you want to add to the headline field, you can leave this empty. But if for some reason, maybe you want to make the page title more enticing, like adding full-time, account executive, urgently needed, remote work, or any of these variables, such as the job codes, addresses, dates, salaries, company names, then on a schema field, you should just customize the field to add only the job position. Next is the job description. And like the headline field, it is a required field as well. If left empty, this field would take information from edit snippet and whatever that is added on this description field. By default, this field runs several checks to get the most optimal description. But if what is written here is not up to your standard, for example, it is truncated here, then feel free to copy the job description you have written, go to your job posting schema, and paste it in the description field. We recommend that you customize your job description instead of relying on the default parameters. If, for example, your job description comes in bullet point form, like in this case, I want to add the job requirements into the description field, you need to format this in HTML. But don't worry, it is simple. Just format the bullet list on your WordPress editor, click on it, you see at the bottom left, you are on the list item layer, which means you have selected only this item, but you want to select the whole list, so click on the one layer above, which is the list layer, and now you will see the entire list selected. And with this options bar appearing, click on the three dots for more options, select edit as HTML, copy all these HTML codes, 
and paste it over to the description schema field. You want to remove all these as they are just comments. As you can see, this is the first item. It has an opening code and a closing code. The second item has an opening and closing. Every HTML code has an opening and closing. And this UL, which signifies the start of the list, will have a closing at the bottom. HTML is not so hard, am I right? So we are basically done with the description. Just take note that if you want to add a bullet list, you need to format it in HTML. Next, in case you want to start your job posting page with a clean slate and you want to use the information entered in the schema fields to be displayed on a page instead, you can do so by just copying this shortcode and pasting it on a blank page. And on a live page, all the information entered in the schema fields will be displayed nicely on the page. That's what this shortcode is about. Next is the salary currency schema field. It says here that this field accepts the ISO 4217 currency code, but don't be intimidated by it. Euro dollars is EUR, US dollar is USD, Singapore dollar is SGD, Indian rupee is INR. So the currency code is not something new to you and me. If you want to verify your currency code, feel free to visit this page. We have left the link in the description. For our case, it will be SGD. For the salary schema fields, these are recommended fields. And if you want to add that information in, it will look something like this for your job posting. I know some employers don't want to show the salary range because most of the time it is negotiable and it depends on the job applicant's qualifications. But if you decide to add information in these fields, this salary field will either be an exact amount or a salary range. For example, 3500. Do not add the currency symbol in this field because you already have that information earlier. So you want to remove this and leave just the integers. And obviously, if it is a full-time job, the amount added here should be the monthly salary. But if it is a part-time job, you can probably include an hourly salary or whatever that fits your job posting. These fields should be quite straightforward. Now, the date posted field is a required field. And by default, when left empty, this will follow the date that you publish this job posting page. But if you want to set a specific date of this job posting, you can utilize our date picker and the right date format will be added for you. So you don't need to guess if the date format is accepted by the schema standard. And if your job post has an expiry date, you can add it here. If it has no expiry date or you do not have an exact date when the company will hire somebody, just leave it blank. Now, as you look at Google's guidelines, you will note that Google ideally wants all expired job posting to be removed from your website. So we recommend keeping this as yes, so that this job post status will be changed to draft and the URL of this job post page will return a 404 error. Next, we have the employment type. This is straightforward. All these needs no explanation, but maybe except for this. This is for jobs that are paid by the day. And if your job posting does not fit any of the employment types above, then select other. You can select more than one option if it fits your purpose. Now, the hiring organization is a required field. I would assume you're hiring for your own company. So if you leave this empty, this variable will use the name of your company you have entered in the local SEO settings. If you want to learn more about the local SEO settings and you want to grow your local traffic, you can check out this video right here. We have a detailed video for you. The link is in the description. But in case you have not set your local SEO settings, feel free to just add your company name here. Now the organization URL. Again, we will use the information in the URL field of the local SEO settings if you leave this schema field empty, but feel free to customize it. Similarly, for the organization local schema, if left empty, this variable will take information from your local SEO settings. The recommended dimensions of your logo image is a one-to-one -one dimension, which means a square image, and the minimum width and height is 112 pixels. And this is recommended by Google. If you have not set your local SEO settings, you can upload your company logo to your site, copy the image URL, and paste it on the schema field. But since I've already done the local SEO settings, which you should, then it is safe to leave this field empty. Next, the job posting ID. Technically, this is the unique identifier for your job posting. And this is more for job listing sites, if you will. 
So for any company that do not have a sheer volume of jobs, just leave this view empty and we will use the URL of this job posting page as the unique identifier. Next, we have this telecommute schema. This is specifically for remote jobs. If your job applicant needs to report to a physical location for work, leave this view off. And this schema is not for hybrid jobs, where it is both remote and on some days the employee needs to report to a specific location, this schema will not apply for that. Turn this on only if the job is 100% remote. If you turn this option on, you don't need to add any information in the address fields. However, you need to add at least one remote job location. You can select the location type as country or state and specify it so that this job posting will appear for job applicants in that particular country or state. If you want your job post to appear to people in another country or state, just add another property group. Simple as that. Next, if you have not turned the telecommute job schema on, you need to add information to these address fields. These address fields are meant for the address where your employee needs to report for work. This is not for the location where your job was posted. For example, if your company has many branches and the main office is the one posting this job, then the address of the branch the employee is reporting to needs to be added here not the address of the main office. Now, what if the same job is meant for multiple branches? I will show you how to do that in a while, so stick with me. Finally, we have this set of schema properties. And as Google guidelines said, these are beta properties. And you may not see any appearance or effect in a Google search right away as they are experimental. But here's the guide if you wanna use these properties. By default, this view is set to false, which means you are considering only the education level as the minimum requirement for applying for the job. You are not considering the experience of the applicant. So this setup is more for entry level jobs. In this case, the education required schema is needed. So you wanna click on add property group and indicate the minimum education level requirement. These are quite straightforward and require no introduction. If you wanna add more than one education requirement, just add another property group and choose the education level. Simple as that. And as for the experience required, since this is not a consideration factor, you can add a zero to this field. However, if you are considering only the experience and not the education, or if you are considering both, you need to set this to true. And as for the experience required field, it considers the value in months. So if two years of experience is required for this job, then this value will be 24. This is how these fields work. I hope this is easily understandable. For some reason, you need to add multiple locations to your job post. As I said, maybe it's a job post for hiring employees for the same job, but for different branches. Here's what you can do. If you have Rank Math Pro installed, you will see this Advanced Editor button at the bottom. Click on that and it will prompt that this action is irreversible and you cannot go back to the simple mode after this action. So we highly recommend that you complete all the information in this schema markup before getting into the Advanced Editor. Alright, let's click OK and your schema fields will now be changed to the advanced mode. Now this is a little advanced so stick with me step by step. I'll try to make it simple for you. Our goal is to achieve this. We will have a job location schema with all the address information nested under an array. In other words, a counter. So the next location you add will be one, following that two. And if there are more locations, the numbers will be incremental. So let's look at the schema. Let's look for the job location schema right here. And the first thing you want to do is to delete this to start afresh. Now scroll to the bottom and you will see this add property group. Click on that and you can start this schema group as job location, just like how it appears on the image. Next, since all the address fields are nested under the counter, we want to add a property group and start this group with a number zero. And then this add type is a property on its own. So on the schema editor, under the counter layer, I will click on add property, name this as add type. And here you want to put place, just like how it appears on the image. Next, the address fields here are part of the address group. So on our advanced editor, within the counter layer, we want to add property group and name this group as address. And then we will add one, two, three, four, five, six single properties within the address group. So that's what I will do. I will add one, two, three, four, five, six. 
single property. The first is add type and postal address, and then add these property fields. Once done, this is meant for the address of one location. Let's say that this job has two locations. I will want to duplicate this entire group of schema fields. So I will go to the counter layer and click on duplicate group and you will see the same group right below. But this time around, you want to change zero to an incremental number, which is one. Now I will add the address for both the locations and we are basically done. Now one question, how do we know if the schema fields we have entered here are correct and applicable? So let's test it. But before that, if you ever find a need to reuse this set of schema fields for future jobs, feel free to click on this save as template so that the next time you visit your schema generator, you can start your schema using your own template. Now let's test the schema. Now this is the job post page we have created earlier. So what you want to do is to right click and view page source. You want to hit Ctrl A or Command A to select everything and copy the page source. Next, go to Google's Rich Results Testing Tool. This is the URL to this page. We have left the link in the description. Now, if your page URL method doesn't work, the safest is to test with the code method. So earlier we have copied the page source. Let's paste it here. And now let's test the code. And you will see that your job posting schema is valid with non-critical issues detected. Let's click through to see what issue that is. It is the valid through schema. Remember earlier we didn't add anything to this posting expiry date field? That's because we do not know when this job post will expire. But if you have a date added here, your job posting schema will pass with flying colors. Now let's scroll down. And you will see that this is the address of the first location and this is the address for the second location we have added through the advanced schema editor. So we have done everything right, which means that your job post page is now ready to be served in the jobs portal of Google search. So there you have it. I hope with this video tutorial, you will know how to work with our predefined job posting schema to get your job offer found on Google searches, which is an additional reach for posting your job on job posting sites or hiring a headhunter. Now it's time to attract high quality talent. If you find this video helpful, do help us out by smashing that thumbs up button. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. Our friendly support team are here to help. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, do consider doing so to get accurate SEO knowledge. This is Jack from RankMath. See you on our other videos.